data that is returned from a smart contract is ABI encoded. You'll need to keep this in mind when you call another contract and that contract returns the data, and also when you use assembly to call an external contract and return some data. The data that you return must also be ABI encoded. In this video, I'll explain how different data types are ABI encoded. For value types that are less than or equal to 32 bytes, they are zero padded on the left. For fixed size bytes, for example, like bytes 8, bytes 16, and bytes 32, that are less than or equal to 32 bytes, are zero padded on the right. For structs and fixed size array, they are just returned as a chunks of 32 bytes. For dynamic arrays, you'll need to encode the offset, length, and then the 32 bytes elements. Let's go through some examples. Let's start with the first one. A value type of less than or equal to 32 bytes. This will be zero padded on the left. And for this example, I'll use address. When this data type is ABI encoded, it will be zero padded on the left. For example, we have an address, ABABAB, and if you do an ABI encode of this address and then return it, later we'll see that it's gonna return 32 bytes, zero padded on the left, followed by 20 bytes of ABABAB. 20 bytes because an address takes up 20 bytes. An exception to this rule is if we're ABI encoding fixed size bytes. For example, if we are ABI encoding bytes 4, then this value will be zero padded on the right. So for this example, let's say that we have bytes 4 of A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and then we ABI encode this and then return it as bytes. What you'll get is a sequence of 32 bytes starting with A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. This is the value that was used for this example. And followed by this, we'll have 28 bytes that represents all zeros. Moving on, let's take a look at struct. How is it ABI encoded when it returns from an external function? For example, I have a struct called point and it has three data, x, y, and z. And notice that the first data type is UN256, oh, so it will take up 32 bytes. The next two data are UN128. Each of these data will take up 16 bytes. Both of these data, y and z, although it takes up only 16 bytes, it will be encoded with 32 bytes. In total, this point will need 32 times 3, or 96 bytes. For example, we have a function called encode struct, and it's going to create a struct with data 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll return this as ABI encoded data as bytes. Again, I'll show you later that when we ABI encode this data and then return it, what we'll get is 32 bytes representing all zeros, and then at the end, we have a 1. The next data is 32 bytes representing all zeros, and then at the end, we have a 2. And the last data is 32 bytes representing all zeros and ending with a 3. So that's struct. Next, let's take a look at fixed sized array. Fixed size array will be similar to structs. Here's an example of fixed size array of type uint8, and it has size 3. There are three elements. The elements are 1, 2, and 3. Now note that to store uint8, we only need one byte. However, each of these elements will use up 32 bytes. The part of the data that is not used will be padded with zeros. So when we return this ABI encoded fixed size array of type uint8, what we'll get is a data that looks like this. The first data will be 32 bytes that represents a 1. The next data will be 32 bytes that represents 2. And the last data will be 32 bytes that represents 3. Notice that for a fixed size array, it has a similar ABI encoding to structs. It doesn't encode any length, it just returns the data as a sequence of multiple of 32 bytes. Okay, and the last topic is dynamic arrays. Dynamic arrays will have an offset, length, and then 32 bytes elements. Here's an example of a dynamic array. For this example, we'll use a dynamic array of type uint8. And again, what you'll see is that although each element doesn't need 32 bytes, however, it will be encoded with 32 bytes. The part of the 32 bytes that is not needed to store uint8 will be padded with zeros. So when we call this function, it will ABI encode this dynamic data, and the data that will be returned will be this. The first 32 bytes is the offset. This tells where the dynamic array starts. This last 0x20 tells that the dynamic array starts after 32 bytes. In other words, it's going to start from here. And this data encodes the length of the dynamic array. Here we have a 3, so in this case, this dynamic array has a size 3. And following it will be the elements. In this case, each element of the dynamic array fits inside 32 bytes. So this data will be the 0th element, 
this one will be the data that is stored in index one, and this one will be the data that is stored in index two. Let's look at another example of a dynamic array. What does the data look like when we ABI encode bytes? Here I have bytes having length three, and for each element, we store the value a, b, a, b, and then a, b. Unlike the last example where each element was padded with zeros so that it will become multiple of 32 bytes, this will not be the case when we encode bytes. Each value will be appended to the previous one. So when we call this function, the data that will be returned will look like this. The first 32 bytes will be the offset. This tells where the data for the dynamic array starts. Since this is 0x20 or 32 bytes, this means that this will start from 32 bytes after this data. So the next 32 bytes will be the start of the data. It encodes the length. This data has length 3. And then afterwards, for bytes, remember that I said that each element will be appended to the previous one. And we can see this over here. AB will be the zeroth element. The next AB will be the element at index 1. And the next element AB again will be the element at index 2. Okay, let's now actually compile the contract, deploy it, and then call these functions. I'll hit Control S to compile the contract, and then we'll deploy it. And then let's call the function encode ADDR. And notice that this value is zero padded on the left. Next, let's call encode bytes four. Call this function, and you can see that it is zero padded on the right. Okay, moving on, let's call the function encode struct. Call the function. We notice that we get one giant sequence, mostly of zeros. Okay, to make this easier to understand, what I'm gonna use is some JavaScript tricks. So I'm gonna open my developer console and then use this command to break this sequence into chunks of 64. First, I'll copy this command and then paste it here. I'll call it str is equal to. And from this, I'll also remove the 0x at the beginning. Okay, next I'm gonna use this command to break this long sequence into chunks of 64. And we get three elements. And you can see that the first element is a one, the next element is a two, and the last element is a three. Okay, next let's call the function encode un256 fix size array. So I'll call this function. And again, I get a long sequence of mostly zeros. Again, I'll use the same trick, copy this, paste it into my console remove the 0x in the beginning, and then execute this command that will break this long sequence into chunks of 64. Okay, and I get three elements, one, two, and three. Okay, moving on. Let's now call the function encode uint a r. This function will return a dynamic array. Encode uint r, and again, it returns a long sequence of mostly zeros. Copy this, paste it into the console, remove the 0x, Execute the command that will break the sequence into lengths of 64, and we get an array back. And you can see that the array elements starts with an offset, the length, and the elements. And for the last example, we'll call the function encode bytes. Call the function encode bytes, and again, we'll use the JavaScript console. Copy this, paste, remove 0x, execute this JavaScript command, and we get the offset, the length, followed by the actual data, a, b, a, b, a, b. Okay, so those were some examples of how different data are ABI encoded. You'll need to remember this. When we use assembly to make some external call and receive data, this data that we receive inside our contract will be ABI encoded. And also, if we were to return some data using assembly, we will need to ABI encode the data.